Okay. Ready? Oh yeah, how's the beard? How's the beard? <laughs> Beard's good? Beard check. <laughs> beard check. <laughs> Alright guys, we've done this on Blade HQ's channel, so now it's my turn. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I am here today with Zach from Blade HQ. We are somewhere near Atlanta for Blade Show 2019. How's your Blade Show going? It's been crazy, but I'm, good, good. <laughs> I'm worried about you, man. I know you're interviewing people all the time, so I appreciate you taking the time to let me do this. No, I, I appreciate being on, man. We, we love the channel, so. Uh, I appreciate that. On Blade HQ's channel a little while ago, they had me on for a knife banter where I gave some of my top five EDC knives. They were knives that were kind of special to me, but I could also recommend to people. In my opinion, there were a lot of good knives there. Now you got a couple in front of me, and I don't know a whole lot about these, cause I mean, I'm into knives, not like you're into knives, not like a lot of people at Blade Show are into knives. So walk me through your selection of your top five knives that you carry, you have some kind of connection with, and just give a little story behind them. Cool, sounds good, man. Starting with the gateway, the gateway knife, the knife that got you into yeah, carrying knives. Yeah, yeah, we all got a gateway, right? <laughs> Whether it's a knife, a gun, a bike, whatever, right? We all got a gateway, right. so. So, so this was this is my gateway. I've been I've been carrying knives for a long time, like ever since I was a little kid, right? Okay. And you know, my grandpa Claude, he was like an old cowboy, mm -hmm. and uh, one time he was like shooting a horse or something, and he asked me for pocket knife, and I'm like shooting a horse? No, shooing. <laughs> oh, I'm like what? <laughs> no, 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 shooing a horse. Okay, shooing. Uh, a horse. I mean, he did that too, but like this is a different time. Okay. Uh, he's just shooing a horse, and he needed a pocket knife, and I was like eight, and he's like he's like, hand me your pocket knife, and I was like, I don't got one, Grandpa. And he's like, you got a pocket, don't you? So I've always had a pocket knife. Okay. But this knife right here, this is what made me fall in love with knives. So this is the uh, HK Mini Axis. At the time, it was made. By by Benchmade, mm -hmm. um, so it's a great, great design. You got the access lock and all that stuff. D2 steel, um, G10 handles, and this thing. I don't know what it was, man. I've been carrying knives forever, and there's just something about the action and stuff. It's just awesome. I so, mean, you can't go wrong with that access lock. Yeah. Like, it just, it's the same across all their knives. And what kind of blade steel is this? D2, yeah. D2, okay. Yeah, so. so, so it's like, a, it's not. So a lot of guys now kind of harsh the D2. But uh, I don't know what they did to the heat treat on this, but this is like full on working knife. And you can see the tip's missing just a little bit. That's a little, you, uh, I mean, you ground it back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's, it's still I, there. I try to put it back a little bit. Um, but yeah, this thing, as you can see, seen a lot of love. And this was this was the thing that made me fall in love with knives. Very like, cool. Full yeah, you can tell this one was carried a lot. Yeah. My gateway one was the Gerber Paraframe. So yeah. this is, def I would yeah. much rather this be my first <laughs> knife, but. Well, I remember going in and buying this too. It was like, it, this was like, I mean, it was like $180, $150, I don't remember. It was it was money right yeah. at the time. And, and I remember being like, am I really gonna pay this much for a knife? And then I did and I'm like, boy, am I glad I did. <laughs> look, at, look at us now, man. I know, right? <laughs> oh my God, I made a purchase this morning, which I'll show you guys later. But, whew, yeah, it's a good one, it's, it's a good one. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one. This yeah. one kind of segues into the next. Yeah, yeah, so, so this one, uh, this next one, I've handled thousands of knives at Blade HQ. And uh, a lot of really, really great knives. But there's only one knife that has like felt like home, has felt like that mini axis. Mm -hmm. And it's this Chavez Redencion. This thing, man, titanium, micarta, I think it's S, yeah, S35 VN blade. And just the finish, the Tonto, everything about it, man. And the, the action on this thing is just stupid. So this was one that after my recent knife collection video, I said, pick my next knife. Yeah. And a lot of people, I haven't gone, I should actually go through and see what the comments said, but a lot of people said to get the Chavez. And I went past their booth yesterday and I don't know. I don't know if it's for me. Yeah. Like I, I dude, the action though, I, I can really appreciate oh, it. Oh gosh, it's so good. But man. And uh, I haven't tuned it, I haven't nothing. Like this was out of the box. Out of the box. Perfect, man. Phosphor bronze washers it looks like, but I mean, killer blade shape on this one as well. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of like the Tonto blade style. Yeah, I am as well. Especially even though it has that little bit of belly uh -huh. in there, it makes it way easier to sharpen. So this would be, I mean, this would be a great knife. Maybe I should pick it up because a lot of people would probably like to see a review you, on that. You really should, man. I, I can introduce you to Ramon. He's an awesome dude. Okay. He's an awesome Very dude. Very cool. The one thing that threw me off yeah. is that... <laughs> I was going to get to it. That You talk about you it. Know, here's, here's the thing, man. <laughs> Let me get a close-up. Yeah, yeah. Get a close-up of that. This is the thing that threw me off right here. <laughs> the pocket clip. I, I understand it in uh, in certain knives, but this one for me, I was just like, man, can't it just be just like round? So here's the thing. <laughs> I don't like I don't like loud pocket clips. Right. Like full on, I don't like loud pocket clips. And I, But I handled this and I was like, the action is so good. And I, I knew Ramon, yeah. right? And like this is this is on brand for him. Like this isn't okay. tough guy stuff. This isn't this is full on. This is just who Ramon is. And uh, so I was just like, 
I'm gonna do it. And so even when I when I have the knife, like people look and they're like, oh, he's carrying a knife. Cause it's so loud. Cause yeah, yeah. Don't, I don't even care. Cause the knife is that good. Like okay. I don't even care. Well, that, that yeah. says something for it. Then. Yeah, no, it's amazing knife all the way around. So yeah, Chavez. Maybe with some pocket <laughs> time, I would warm up to something like that. Yeah, 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 you, you really should. Next um, one, moving into a different category now. Yeah, so like on a whole nother spectrum, yeah. right? So this is the We Knife Co. Scamp. Uh, so also S35 VN blade, it's got a titanium handle. Um, it's got this like kind of like brushed bronze steel on the whole knife. Yeah. That's all done by hand. Okay. Um, so it's not a custom, this is a production knife, that's just how they do it in their facility. I thought a lot of their stuff was just like mass produced. No, yeah. I didn't know they did anything like that. Yeah, no, like, uh, so and it, it is, like it's all production stuff, mm -hmm. but they everything they put out is like first off super high quality. I've never pulled a Wii knife. I don't like all their designs, mm -hmm. but the action and stuff's incredible. Okay. Um, and then they always put like little touches like that on it. And that's that's kind of like a common misconception because they're a Chinese company, so yeah. everyone's like, ah, Chinese, this and that, whatever. Yeah. But that's very cool. So this is a traditional folder. Yeah. So I guess. yeah. So this is a slip joint, and the reason that it's the reason that it's here is this is kind of like like my top five knives right now that have like opened my eyes to different knives, right? And so the reason that this is here is I'm not, I carried slip joints as a kid. I'm not a slip joint guy at all until I got this. And you can feel the walk and talk on that when you close and open it. It's just stellar. It's very defined. It like. is, man. And it like it has a, a nice like fall close shutting and just I love this knife. I, uh, I love the the profile of it too. It's just super slim, like a sort of like a gentleman's folder. Uh -huh. But so. When you carry this, you just drop it in your pocket? Yep, just no, drop it no in my pocket. No pocket clip or anything? Okay. Yeah, and uh, that was another reason that I don't like carrying slip joints is a lot of times, you know, like I, I love case knives, I love Victorinox mm -hmm. knives, they're great, but a lot of them are kind of smaller. Yeah. And so you throw it in your pocket and I feel like you like sit down on the bed or whatever and boom, knife, it knife's like, gone. Yeah. Yeah, but with this one being a little bit longer, like no problems. And it probably like nestles in the bottom of your pocket mm -hmm. and you're good to go. Exactly. So just really beautiful knife and then, then again, just like that action, man. Like yeah. it just feels so good. That's so. one that I need to add to my collection too. Just uh, like the, I think you guys did a video on like a modern traditional folder. Modern traditional, yeah. The um, the Chris Reeve, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Some with an I. The Impinda? Yeah, yeah the yeah. Impinda. I saw the, uh, the, the cut through model of that uh -huh. and that thing is sweet, but yeah. those also come with a hefty price. Tag, yeah, those, so. are a little, those are a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to another one. All right, so uh, this one is kind of a newer knife. Um, and I got this as kind of an advanced sample from Benchmade. It's a Benchmade Outlast. Okay. So you've got kind of your standard blade here. I'm trying to remember the blades. This is an S30B blade here, okay. but then it has a secondary blade. Whoop, let's see if I can get it. It has a secondary blade that's Ooh. a serrated blade with a pry tip, and this is 3V. Okay, I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't even notice that when it was sitting here on the table. I had no idea. Yeah, so I got this as an advanced copy from uh, Hans at Benchmade, Okay. and I carried it for a while. Dude. I fell, this is a big knife for me. Like I'm not a big knife guy. It is a big knife, yeah. But I fell in love with this because that secondary blade, I just used to beat up everything. Cause I'm hard on my knives. I'm like a hard use guy. And then keep this one nice mm -hmm. and intact. Yeah, okay. exactly. And I'm sure that's even pretty beat up, but you know, <laughs> so I my, I can. <laughs> my first impression of this is it's a lot lighter than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. For having two blades in there, I'm, what is this, G10? Uh, I think it is a G10 on that. Yeah, okay, yeah I'm pretty so sure. It has some pretty cool texture to it. And then the, I'll say the normal blade, the right side blade has a yep. thumb stud and then the opposing blade has this sort of like thumb hole. Yeah, so you can you can actually like spidey flick that. And that's so that's, it's also fun to play with, right? You like, got down and dirty with that tip, man. Oh, yes I have. <laughs> I, I would do the same thing. I mean, that's what it's for. That's so. exactly it. And then the, the other cool thing with these serrations, this is serrated even though it's like an edged serration. Yeah. So it still cuts but it's like razor sharp. You know, a lot of okay. serrations, it's like a sawtooth, so you kind of have to try to cut, Yeah. but if you ran your finger across that, it would cut you. Okay. Um, so it's kind of a really neat, neat serration, something a little bit different. That is pretty cool, and these are in yeah. production now? In production now, yeah. So you got the deep carry pocket clip, glass breaker on the end, Tattoo. and then uh, the other rad thing is it's got a seat belt cutter. <laughs> Dude, it has three blades <laughs> yeah, in it now. Yeah, I, again, I didn't notice that. Yeah, so you know, it was now. designed obviously for like uh, paramedics, Leo, yeah. that type of thing, um, first responders. Um, I don't really have any use for the seatbelt cutter to be honest. Right. But just the double blade action and then the fact that it's running on an axis lock with two blades, okay. super red. I get a lot of questions from first responder type of people and they're like, hey, what kind of knife would you recommend? I would prefer a seatbelt cutter. Yeah. The one that I always went to was a CRKT 
M16s, whatever it is. Yeah, CLK. they, they, they have like a million M16 variations, but they do have a couple with the seatbelt. Yeah, cutter. the yeah. seatbelt cutter. That was uh, that was one that I had, but that is definitely one that I can add to my list to recommend to people. Yes, yeah. no, it's great, man. And then deep carry pocket clip. So even though it is a bigger knife, it goes all the way in the pocket, so it's not like bulging out or anything. Huge like plus that. on that for exactly. sure. Exactly. Cool, cool. All right, uh, man. You know what's funny is we didn't line it up this way, but it's kind of like every other knife is like way different. <laughs> they are a lot different. Yeah, that, I, I did that on purpose. When yeah, yeah, I yeah. With you, there but you yeah. Go, yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, this wasn't on purpose. I just, I guess I got varied tastes. <laughs> They're actually all different locking mechanisms. <laughs> yeah, and totally. Cool. Um, so, the, so this one here, this is the uh, Hogue Micro Switch. And uh, you probably know Hogue from like gun grips, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, we, well, you and I both went by the booth at Chacho, Show, I yeah. believe. Yeah, so. yeah. So super solid dudes. Love, love Neil over at Hogue. All, the whole crew, they're all awesome. We actually did a uh, shop tour with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I picked this up. So we toured the shop they have in California. Everything's USA made, lifetime warranty, all that jazz. Um, and then for the second part of the video, I actually hitchhiked from Nevada back to Utah. Wait, in the video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, like, I have not seen that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta check I it gotta out. I gotta watch it. And video. I like traded knives. Like for rides. Really? Yeah, so I like, so we just put a thing out on Instagram and we're like, we're like, hey, who wants a knife? And people were like, sure. And so like, I got people to drive me all the way from Nevada, all the way up to Utah. What? I, I don't know how I've not, yeah. I'm gonna leave a link for that video right up there in the corner. That sounds super interesting. It's a lot like, of fun. I slept in a concrete pipe and everything. Dude. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God, dude. That's some stuff that I would do. Yeah, it was dope. It was dope. So, so uh, I, I got this knife from Neil uh, when we got to the Nevada facility, because they also have a facility in Nevada where they do all their autos. Okay. Um, so I got this from Neil Hogue, super great guy, and uh, dude, I put this thing through the paces. Like, it's like I mean, you can even see the end. Like, I've hammered with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're, like, you're rough on your knives. Ah, dude, I'm not. I'm, I, I am. I'm rough on my knives. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has some wear to it. Do you know the price point on these? Uh, I want to say that they go for like, ooh, man, that's hard. I want to say in the 150-ish range. I could be okay. wrong, but I think they're in the 150-ish range. So I mean, that puts it pretty competitively with a lot of other knives oh, yeah. in the same category. Yeah, and, and if you feel the action on it, I mean, you've been carrying that Protec. Yeah, And right Protec, now. Protec has a very defined, very, very specific type of fire, mm -hmm. but these Hogs are nice, dude. Yeah, this this is not bad, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and they got a whole line of other knives, but I like this one, it's a little bit smaller. Um, and to be honest, this was my first, like, real auto. Okay. So I had plenty of, like, you know, gas station. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> Everybody needs one of those. Um, but this was, like, my first real auto. And at first, the safety actually turned me off. I was like, nah, man, I don't... I was the same way with yeah. the TR5. I don't care about the safety, but... Yeah. Legitimately, I slept out that night in the pipe in this video, right? You guys check it out. But uh, I slept out and I wanted to keep the knife in my pocket, mm -hmm. you know, just in case. Right. And uh, and I was like, well, I don't want the auto to go off. And I was like, wait a minute, it's got a lock. There you go. And like Perfect. literally within a day of carrying it, I was like, sold. Because <laughs> that was like when I was started carrying the Protec, I was like, this thing fires hard. I mean, it's a Protec, and I don't want this thing going off my pocket because yep. that would not, it would not be good. It would not be good. <laughs> so, very cool. So the safety's pretty rad. Um, and then this is a aluminum handle and CPM. 154 blade they some people don't like the 154 I like it it's a good working steel I don't mind it it's easy to sharpen mm -hmm. honestly no complaints at all but they are upgrading uh, some of their steels I think they're moving to an s30 or an s35 or something like that. okay a lot so, of companies yeah. are, are bumping up to s35 yeah. it seems like yeah, it's becoming more and more affordable from crucible um, and and that's it's a great steel because it's all USA made you know what cool. I mean? yeah, so, yeah good stuff but anyways yeah the Hogue micro switch I freaking love that knife. Hogue micro switch yeah next one this one was also I I think on the the knife banner video, people were yeah. telling me to get this knife, which yeah, yeah. we didn't go that route, which that's fine. It's not really my style, but tell me what you love about this. Thing. Okay, okay. So this is this is the the giant mouse biblio, and uh, they do make it in a black G10. So okay. so you so might that, dig it. You might dig it. Yeah, <laughs> you might yeah. dig it a little more. Um, I'm a micarta guy, so this is a natural canvas micarta M390 blade. Uh, it's a uh, Jesper Voxnes and uh, Jan Zanso design. Okay. Um, that's kind of who owns Giant Mouse. So it's these two like really rad knife makers. They got together, they were buddies, and they're like, dude, why don't we just like make our own stuff? And so they started their own thing, and like that's what they do now. They're doing a good job yeah. with it. Yeah, doing a great job. So anyways, everything about this knife. So it fits really great. I mean, it is a, it's a liner lock, but it's a nice liner lock. It's got great action. Um, but the reason that this knife is here is because it's uh, M390 blade. Okay. And so this was the knife that sold me on M390. We used this for a camp video, and uh, we went camping, it was like for like a night, just one night, right? Mm -hmm. Like we were just testing out some knives. We used it for a camp video, and like we did a bunch of whittling, we made fires, the whole nine yards, and then this thing floated, not this exact one, but the M390, it floated around the department for like two months, mm -hmm. and then I ended up picking it up again, and it was still razor sharp. 
And I was okay. like, dope, M390. So, yeah. <laughs> that's like if you never want to sharpen a blade, exactly. that's what you want to go with. <laughs> you get the M390. This and um, LMAX, aren't they comparable? Yeah, they're, they're comparable. Uh, LMAX is a little bit uh, harder, okay. right? So okay. LMAX is, now here's the other thing guys, like obviously it all depends on like heat treat. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Generally, LMAX tends to be just a little bit chippier than uh, M390. Pretty cool blade shape to that too. Yeah, I love the blade shape. It's got a nice belly to it. Like it's a it's a great blade, man. And these guys are here. I actually have to swing by their booth and yeah. see some of the stuff that they make. You should go see them. I think, were you carrying this last night? Uh, Someone was carrying a, a knife with a wire pocket clip like this and we talked about it for a second, but some people don't like that. I'm actually a fan of it. Dude, I like the wire pocket clip. They work, they're yep. they're kinda, it doesn't scream knife. It's subtle. It doesn't yeah. scream pocket <laughs> exactly. clip like that. Like, yeah. You compare that to the Chavez, it's a whole different, <laughs> yeah. whole different experience. Whole different type of knife for a whole different type of person, but that's yeah. cool. I mean, to have both of those in your collection, that's uh, some good choices there. Yeah, man, I, yeah, I really like them. And, uh, we could talk about this all day, but we do have to go back to the show. Yeah, so. we got, I, I got like a bunch more stuff. I gotta <laughs> yeah, a lot more stuff to film. <laughs> So if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know in the comments down below. Maybe you can jump on and answer some of them because sure. I don't know a whole lot about these knives. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for sitting down with me and taking the time to do this. Dude, thanks for having me on, honestly. It's Appreciate always a pleasure. It, so if you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. Definitely go subscribe to Blade HQ. They're pumping out videos this week. Poor Jamie's back at the convention center yeah. right now working on videos. We got him locked in a closet. <laughs> literally, literally locked in a closet. So they got a lot of content coming out. This is all you're getting from me for Blade Show. Apologize. Oh, I didn't show the knife I picked up. Oh, you gotta show it. I gotta, gotta show, show it real quick before we end the video. Mm. 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 I finally picked up a Medford Praetorian. This is, I mean, obviously a lot of these are handmade. So this is titanium version, and dude, thing is, thing is dude, awesome. It's so sick. And I know you've had an eye. I'm glad you got one, cause like even like last shot show we were talking about, you were like, man, I can get a Medford. Yeah, I was like, that, that's <laughs> one that you kind of have to have in your collection. So finally, I was just like, all right, need to do it. So that's all I got at Blade Show. So <laughs> it's a good one though. It's, <laughs> it's a, a good, good one. one. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.